The first step in any statistical process is collecting the data. How you collect the data does in fact matter. And uh, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about some different sampling methods and how they work. The gold standard of data collecting our very, very best option is going to be something that we call a simple random sample. The idea of a simple random sample, I kind of, my, my favorite analogy for this is uh, just names in, a, names in a hat. Every single person in the population is in the hat on it, and we're gonna just start, we're gonna shake it up and we're gonna pick names out one at a time. But the whole population is represented and every single person has a chance to be picked in that realm. Um, so here, what's important in that simple random sample is that the whole population is having an equal opportunity to be picked. Um, so for example, let's say you have a database at, of all of the students in your college and you wanna randomly have a computer generate, generate a list of 20 random people from that, uh, that would be an example of a simple random sample because all of the students in the school are represented in the database. Everyone has a chance of getting picked and the computer is doing that selection using some random process on the back end. Uh, if you have a hundred people and all of their names are on a list and you use a random number generator to come up with the first 20 people that you can talk to. All of those are examples of simple random samples where the entire population is there and has an opportunity to get picked. Um, you either have to physically shake it up like the hat or you have to have something like a computer to be able to generate the randomness. some way that we are dealing with the entire population as we move forward. Uh, and sometimes this is a little bit more, a little bit difficult to do. It's hard to have the entire population at your fingertips. And um, so another method that we can use in something like this is called systematic sampling. Systematic sampling introduces an element of randomness to it because the person interviewing is not doing the pick. The interviewer doesn't pick the group, doesn't pick who they talk to. The way that sim systematic sampling works is you're going to talk to maybe every blank person and give them the survey. So let's say you're standing outside of a store and you're going to talk to the 10th person that walks through the door every single time. You're gonna sit there, you're gonna count 10 people, you'll talk to that person. Uh, you're gonna count you know, the next 10 people and you're gonna talk to that person. You aren't making the decision. The decision and the randomness is coming in terms of the order that they're walking through the door and how and, and being very specific and intentional about the person that you're talking to. Um, so that I, that's an idea of systematic sampling where we come up with a process that we can use to pick those, um, pick those different people as we go through. Another process that um, a lot of people like to do is something called uh, stratified sampling. And stratified sampling can be used in cases where you want to ensure that different groups are represented. So let's say, for example, if I worked at, uh, so my dad used to work at a potato chip factory and I would work on the line during the summer. Um, and so if I wanted to do quality assurance on the potato chips that were coming off, I would do a stratified sampling set. I would take um, a sample from each of the different machines so I could see how each machine was running. Or I might take a different sample of each uh, different flavor and do and weigh the bags. Right, so I wanna make sure that I have one of every different type of thing 
um, as I go through. In terms of population, sometimes it's really important you want to make sure that you have maybe both male and female representation in that uh, in your discussion. So you make sure that you say, okay, well, I'm going to talk to 50 male uh, entrants, I'm going to talk to 50 female entrants, and I'm going to break my sample up that way. Or maybe different ethnicities is going to be an important differentiation, and you want to make sure that you have uh, those pieces equally represented and picked randomly from within those. Um, so the idea with stratified sampling is you're going to have your whole group, you're going to split it into different categories, and then you're going to randomly pick within each of those categories. Ideally, your groups would represent percentages of the population, right? So, um, so we have kind of that, that random sample piece, but we're making sure and verifying that we have specific demographics represented. Um, you may have... Uh, Phone interviews, I guess, were a little bit more popular in the past, but sometimes I would get called to take a survey on the phone and they would ask me my age and my gender. And then they'd be like, oh, we've talked to enough people in your group. And then they wouldn't continue with the survey anymore because they were trying to fill their different um, their different stratums um, in terms of randomly talking to sufficient people in each of those groups. So these are some examples of some pretty decent random methods. Um, and in each of these, the decision is really out of the hands of the person that's doing an interview. Our worst case of how we can conduct random samples is something that we call convenience sampling. And the basic idea behind convenience sampling is you're gonna take the easy route, right? I'm going to talk whoever it's easy or convenient for me to talk to. Um, this happens when the interviewer makes the choice about who they're going to talk to. And the problem is, as people, you may feel like you're a random person, but we're not random. Uh, in terms of how we psychologically decide who we're willing to talk to, who we would approach or who we wouldn't approach. Um, so things that could be problematic, for example, maybe you're just going to say you're going to put a poll up on Facebook. People may or may not see it. Uh, people may or may not respond, but I'm just going to throw it out there and use that to collect my data. It's an easy way to collect data, but because you're doing this easy route here, there's nothing intentional or planned in the way that those values and people responding come back in. It's not going to represent a good sampling method. Um, maybe you want to just uh, talk to students in your class for a college wide about a college wide issue. Um, you know, people in your class maybe have similar majors, have similar work schedules, have similar situations and might be different from, you know, people in the funeral services industry or the nursing industry. Um, or computer science industry. And so if you're limiting your sample to just a group of people that's easy to talk to, I'm going to stand on this corner to talk to people because it's near my work. Um, I'm going to approach people, you know, we just don't, we're just not random. Um, and so anytime that we need to take the human out of it, that's a good thing. Even if we try to make up for things, a lot of times we're going to overcompensate. So you're like, oh, I haven't talked to any females for a while. So then you're going to go and talk to um, talk to some females for your group. Um, those kinds of things, you can try to introduce more randomness, but it's very, it's not random once you're doing these deliberate um, deliberate pieces there. You're still, as long as you're taking making that human decision about who to talk to, we're in this convenient sampling. And, uh, and that's not our ideal sampling method by any means. So for some of your uh, homework assignments, it's gonna be asking you to choose what sampling method is being described. And these are gonna be the ones that you're gonna wanna choose between your simple random sample, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, or if it just represents a convenient sampling situation. <laughs>